Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm ZS Caravalla from ZK Research, and I'm here inside the Amazon Automotive booth at CES 2024. I'm joined today by Dr. Alex Link from Amazon. Uh, just want to give a quick just, uh, a little bio on yourself. What do you do for Amazon? Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, my name is Alex. I'm leading our solution architecture team for automotive and manufacturing in EMEA. So basically, it's the technical people helping our top strategic automotive and manufacturing customers when they want to move into cloud and use cloud um, in a more um, advanced way. Uh, all right, well, we are, at, as I mentioned, at CES 2024. It's uh, day two of the show. Uh, what do you think of the show? It's, it seems like uh, I heard almost 200,000 attendees. Anything here uh, you, know, you were looking for or caught your eye? Yeah, I mean, I think it was uh, a great first day and the second day is kicking off very, very well. Um, we have so many um, traction in that booth. A lot of our um, automotive customers are stopping by or we have opportunities to meet with them in their booth. So I think like for the automotive industry and coming together and showcasing our commitment to the industry, it was so far a, a great show. Yeah, what's amazing uh, for me is this, this hall, the West Hall, is all automotive. Yeah. Right, and you think about even a few years ago, the automotive presence wasn't that big, yeah. right? But now here, there's flying cars and yeah. software to flying yeah. cars, and and, and really um, anything to do with automotive you can think of yeah. is here. And so the uh, I, I just think it's remarkable, just in such a short period of time, yeah. how fast the innovation's gone. And so this is um, this is one of the bigger booths, right? The Amazon Automotive booth. What what are you showing here? I mean, in general, let's say this is the, the umbrella of Amazon and it's coming together both from the AWS side where we are on the, on the cloud side, but then also our Alexa colleagues who are um, having some demos on the Alexa Auto um, topic. So I think um, as, an, as an umbrella, um, we can really like both on the customer journey, but then also like how do we help our customers? How do we help the OEMs to innovate faster? How do we help tier ones to be integrated in the development cycles? I think this is an, this is an exciting um, way to, to showcase the, the full picture of how an Amazon can help. And I noticed uh, you've got a wall of license plates. That's uh, your, all your ecosystem partners. Yeah. Right? That is, uh, I didn't realize you had so many. There's, yeah. There, there, there's a, a bunch of them there. So uh, I did notice there was a bunch of demo stations. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, give a brief description of what some of the demos here are. Yeah, maybe just to the to the partners first. I think um, it's really crucial in in the automotive industry for AWS in general. I would say in the wider ecosystem, and we have such a large um, partner base. Um, but then also in automotive, where you have these companies who have been in this field and are such experts in their area that we are working closely with them and how to help them to um, integrate into the into the new way of working like going into virtual from physical hardware and like all these kind of things and the trends you're seeing we, we touched on software defined vehicle before yeah. and like how this has been changing in the past years the uh, the way how um, automotive companies are thinking about like delivering um, applications to their customer updating um, software in the car and now we are seeing this also more more and more going into the the um, development, um, I mean, typical car life cycle from start of a project until the car hits the road seven years, but right? oh, that's, yeah. that's a long time. So I think a lot what you can see also in some of the demos over there is like, how can we, um, with our partners, um, help OEMs and, and big tier ones to shorten that time that they can actually develop software for hardware that doesn't exist yet. Yeah. Right. They think and so how do you do that? They, so that's yeah. the, then you virtualize the hardware yeah. and it runs as a digital twin in the cloud. Is that the idea? Yeah. So that, that's basically the idea. So I think um, one of the big topics that we are currently um, working with our customers, uh, basically this means OEM, but also tier ones is like what we call a virtual um, workbench. So it's, um, you have workbenches in the past, right, where you have different tools from different suppliers that are being stitched together in order to develop software. Um, now this comes all into the um, into the virtual space, into the cloud. You can set this up in a virtual environment, spin it up as an, in a virtual machine. And where it gets exciting now is, and this is where a lot that you can see of our work is going into with our partners, is um, can you also virtualize the hardware? And I think this is where AWS has also a unique position because a position because we have been working with ARM as a um, right. as a compute um, architecture for quite some time, and nowadays this is like more and more and more becoming also the standard for automotive, yeah. right? And so this is where we can now, and this is what you what you will see in some of the demos, create this parity between the vehicle 
and the cloud. And so you basically can use what we're already having for years, our ARM instances, in order to kick off um, development for the vehicle um, today, right? And so it's basically we're helping the partners how to integrate, how so to adapt can their tools. develop features on cars today for cars that aren't going to be launched for multiple years. Yeah. Yeah. And they can test it, right? I mean, yeah. that's, that's the exciting part. You, you spin up a cloud instance on ARM and you can yeah. test at least some things already. And we are investing in, in memberships like initiatives like SOFI, which is exactly there, how to make parity between cloud and cars to really like, I mean, speed is going to be so important yeah. for the industry. Well, that's and that's what it's going for. You can do that. And so uh, it's hard to uh, overstate the impact this will have for the automotive industry. I, yeah. uh, I recall listening to an executive from Ford actually talk about that trend also where for the first time ever, an auto manufacturer could actually deliver innovation into, an, into a, a finished product. Yeah. Yeah. Where historically in the automotive industry, well, you really couldn't do that, yeah. right? And, and uh, if you could, it was you had to bring the car back yeah. into the dealer. Yeah, exactly. And that was a very expensive process. So yeah. from a consumer perspective, talk about what, what does this mean for the end customer? I mean, I think in general, like um, both for the for the OEM, but also for the end customer, it means like the relationship does not end when the car is sold, right? Like it's yeah. it's really like it's it's just a starting point, and then you're really like engaging in this virtual customer experience where you said you can deliver software over the air, you can have um, subscription-based models, you can create new services and roll it out to an existing fleet. So I think it's getting excited that this kind of like the feeling that you have and what you use to. With your um, with your cell phone and your smartphones, that is a suddenly going into the into the vehicle and it's like giving you such a new ecosystem. That yeah, you I don't know how I feel about having a subscription to my car now. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I have one to everything else, so why not? Uh, now it's not just in the car that you're driving innovation, right? I, um, from what I saw around the around your booth, you were actually doing a lot of innovation, um, kind of around the. Um, uh, the auto ecosystem too, right? From a purchasing standpoint, yep. from a customer experience. So can you talk about those things? I mean, in the end, what, what we want to do, like at, at Amazon, we're always working backwards from our customers. And our customers are the OEMs, are the first tier. So if, obviously they they have like a, a, a big um, space, how they are serving their customers, right? And it starts with like configuration of vehicles. How do you get, um, basically virtualize that? Are you getting away from physical dealerships and going more in the virtual space? Then within the dealerships, yeah. if it hits the dealership, right? Like how do you make sure that it's available somewhere? What is the options that are there? Financing around this. Do you really have to have someone who does a credit check manually or can you upload some documents in order to, to automatically check that and use AI in order to do it? So like I would say in that general- That is a painful process. I yeah. can imagine, I'm not yeah. from the US, <laughs> but I have heard there's like... Um, no, anything to speed it up. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I, I bought my son a car a little while ago. Yeah. I knew exactly what I wanted and it, it still took the better part of two hours yeah. once you yeah. enter the dealership, yeah. right? So anything to speed that up, I think yeah. it would be uh, greatly appreciated. And, you know, when you think about the whole softwareization of cars, you, you, you won't have to refresh the vehicle as often, yeah. but still get the new features where a lot of times I feel like if I buy a car, the next year there's all these new features in it that I should have just waited again, yeah. right? So yeah. that's a bit of the best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it's also I would say, um, I mean, you, um, we touched um, earlier a little bit about also, let's say in the past, if there was an issue in the field, the only option you had was like calling the, back, the car back to the dealership. Yeah. Now there is an opportunity, maybe you can fix this over the air, right? It's right. also from customer point of view, um, it's of course like a different experience if you're saying like, hey, you have to come back to the dealership, you have to schedule a, a, a meet, uh, like an appointment and so on. Or if they just say, hey, we identified a problem and has been fixed. So I think there's, there's a lot that is, um, from a customer perspective, it's just like, very different when you are talking more virtual instead of physical. And uh, just you know, last question. I'm curious about where we are in the whole autonomous vehicle journey. I know Amazon's been a real leader there. Even from your own delivery standpoint, you're trying to get more uh, autonomous vehicles to get more product in more places. Uh, when do you you know when do you think that's going to uh, you know be a reality here? Oh, I, I, I wouldn't make any predictions, <laughs> um, but what I can say is, um, so I, I would say we see... I know there's regulatory issues and things like that. So, uh, yeah. What our customers are currently focusing very much on is advanced driving. Yeah. Um, so um, ADAS systems, and you might have seen we had some, some collaborations also um, announced earlier this year uh, with Qualcomm, who is yeah. like a chip um, provider for the, um, for the automotive industry, and then some um, collaborations in this space, also for example with BMW to co-innovate 
together with Qualcomm. And so I think a lot of focus is currently on advanced driving, like level three supporting in, in certain conditions. Yeah, so this is the, um, one of the things I think that's very misunderstood in the industry is we're not going to go from today to no driver, no controls in a car overnight. But along the way, we've added a bunch of features that actually make us safer drivers. Yep. Or things like parallel park assist where people aren't very good at it, it does it for them, right? So lane change alert and all these things have made uh, you know, drivers uh, safer and better uh, through the use of AI, right? That's, yeah. And, and okay. I think that's been you know great innovation for everybody. And, and that's that's what we're seeing yeah. a, lo a lot. I mean, one space maybe just to highlight um, on the commercial side in trucking, I think this is where we are seeing more advances. For example, yeah. level four when it comes to the um, the subsidiary of Mercedes uh, of Daimler Trucks, um, which is Torque. Um, I think they they were. Uh, a long-term partner of ours and we see a lot of advancements there when it comes to how can you basically do level four this basically means point-to-point -point, um, driverless um, connection so out for example outside of the city if you're just going yeah, on a highway sure. I think it there's there's yeah, you, a lot you can see you, right you now you see in construction sites and you know think even like on uh, university campuses yeah uh, in fact I saw in Vegas there's a CES shuttle that's uh, that's, that's driverless now so yeah. you know. Uh, good. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? No, I mean it's just exciting to really um, for for us also as, as AWS and as Amazon to really like to underline our commitment to the industry. I mean you can yeah. see it here, right? I think this is um, it's exciting to come here together with the industry to have these deep um, conversations about like problems that is deep automotive and not just cloud. I think this is a, an interesting and exciting uh, development yeah, I know. I know when I, I talk to people about Amazon and automotive, they're a little surprised. They're like, why is Amazon mm. an automotive? But I think the common denominator here is the cloud, yeah. right? As you talked about, so much of the innovation is done in the cloud yeah. that it, it makes sense for Amazon to be in the space. It is, and, and maybe just one more, one more thing to add. I think it was just also very interesting where a lot of our um, customers are also coming to us to asking us, hey, how does Amazon innovate? Right, like how do you do this? And so we actually have these programs how we are helping our customers to give an insight how, how do we do our internal um, yeah. uh, product development processes. So this is another exciting part. Actually, that I, that I do find uh, a fascinating go-to-market uh, uh, method for Amazon. Because some of your other products like Amazon Connect mm -hmm. and uh, um, supply chain and things like that were built in-house, mm -hmm. right? And then they became uh, forward-facing yeah. products and so uh, you know, you've done, I know uh, Amazon's done a lot of work in the area of drones and things like that, and so it's good to see you taking that innovation and make a customer facing though, so. I mean, that's, that's even yeah. how AWS got started, right? It was right, right, first yeah. internally, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it got yeah. at some point become an yeah. external um, offering, so yeah. yeah. All right, Alex, uh, well, uh, appreciate the time. Yeah, likewise. And uh, I hope if you're at CES, you came by and saw the Amazon Automotive booth, it's uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a massive booth with a lot of innovation. So on behalf of Alex Link from Amazon, I'm Zia Scaravala from ZK Research, saying thanks for watching, and as always, please hit that subscribe button.